Us today we are going to discuss an another green alga and that is hydrodictyon. The term hydrodictyon is made of two words. One is hydro meaning water and second is dictyon meaning net. So hydrodictyon is commonly called as water net. This alga is the member of order Chlorococcales of class Chlorophyceae. As you know that all the members of class Chlorophyceae contains major pigment as chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B and the reserve food material in the members of class Chlorophyceae is always starch. It is a free floating fresh water alga that is found in pools, ponds and even in the lakes. It grows luxuriantly during summers and spring season. As far as its species are concerned, till now only 5 species have been reported all over the world among which Hydrodictyon indicum and Hydrodictyon reticulatum are the common Indian species. It is a macroscopic synovial alga. In previous videos, I have explained what exactly the synovium is. Synovium is a colony and the colony in which the number of cells is definite is said to be as the synovium. So hydrodictyon is also a synovial alga and macroscopic alga. Macroscopic means that its thallus can be seen by naked eyes. So it is a macroscopic synovial alga forms free floating water net on the surface of water body. The synovium are sausage shaped. Sausage shaped means the colony looks like a net. This net is open at one end and closed at the other end and the length of this net, the length of this synovium may be from 20 to 80 centimeters but sometimes you can see the length of 1 meter also. So synovium contains several cells, several similar cells and the number of cells varies from few hundred to several thousands. The cells are cylindrical pencil shaped and when the cells are young these are uninucleate. Here the important and uh, interesting point is that these individual cells are connected by their ends to one another and form a characteristic hexagon or pentagon pattern in this net. So cells are cylindrical pencil shape joined end to end to form a design of pentagon or hexagon. So whenever you will see this colony or this synovium, you will see the cells in hexagonal or pentagonal pattern forming a net. That is why it is called water net. Each cell has a central vacuole. When you, whenever you will see a single cell, it is almost rectangular in shape and it consists of a central vacuole. Central vacuole means that the major part, major central part of the cell is occupied by a vacuole and the protoplast of the cell is always present between the wall of the vacuole and the wall of the cell in the form of a layer. When the cells are young, they are uninucleate with parietal chloroplast having single pyrenoid. Again I am saying that when the cells of the colony are young, they are uninucleate with parietal chloroplast having a single pyrenoid. But when the cells mature, they become some multinucleate with a reticulate chloroplast having several pyrenoids. This is a basic difference between the young cells and 
mature cells. So whenever you will see a young colony, you will see the uninucleate cells. And if you find uh, multinucleate cells, then you can say that the colony is a mature colony. And this is the uh, characteristic and interesting feature of hydrodictyon. As far as number of cells in the synovia is, is concerned, the number is determined at the young stage when the colony is smaller in size. When this colony grows, it becomes larger in size, but it increases only in the size. The number of the cell is not changed. Number is decided when the colony is in young stage. So, as far as reproduction is concerned, hydrodictyon reproduces by three methods. One is vegetative, second is asexual, and third is sexual method. Vegetative method is very simple and it, it takes place by the fragmentation. Fragmentation means if the colony or synovium is broken in a small fragments due to any accident, so, the broken part is called as fragment end. Each fragment is capable to form a new colony or a new synovia. In this video, we will discuss only about the asexual reproduction in hydrodictyon. Asexual process always takes place under favorable conditions. And each cell of the colony is capable to produce reproductive bodies. Asexual reproduction takes place by means of biflagellate zoospores and each cell of the colony is capable to produce these biflagellate zoospores. During asexual reproduction, any cell of the colony may behave like a zoosporangium. The uh, multinucleate protoplast of the cell divides into 7000 to 20,000 uninucleate segments. And before these uh, zoospore formation, the pyrenoids disappear from the cell and starch grains are accumulated in the chloroplast. So, during a sexual process, the multinucleate protoplasm of the cell divides into 7000 to 20,000 uninucleate segments and each segment is converted into a biflagellate zoospore. Due to sudden contraction, all the zoospores are arranged in a column and after some time, the column becomes loose and individual zoospores starts to move freely inside this cytoplasm. These zoospores move very fast and randomly inside the cell and after swimming of some time, these zoospores lose their flagella and each zoospore is converted into a pencil shaped cylindrical cell and these cells again are arranged into pentagonal or hexagonal manner forming a new net inside the cell. Or we can say a new synovium is formed inside the cell. When this arrangement completes, the original wall of the parent cell disintegrate and this new colony is released in the water and it starts to grow into a new thallus or new synovium or a new colony. Thank you.